Hello and welcome to this presentation at the start of 2022 on seven ways to retain your best tradespeople and also avoid them being poached. It's great to have you on this session, uh, which will go for the next sort of 45 or 50 minutes. And I trust it's a valuable topic for you, a pretty pertinent topic at this time um, in the industry. It's uh, sort of unprecedented at times over the last couple of years, and you've probably heard that and probably say it yourself dozens of times, but we're uh, here in this session to work with you on building and, and keeping your best team players to help you accomplish the goals that you're out to accomplish as well. So let me get started by introducing myself. Uh, my name's John Mailer. I am the uh, founder and also CEO of a company called Pro Trade United. If you've been on one of these sessions before, you'll know exactly what it's all about. And if it's your first time with us, welcome. And we've got a pretty jam-packed uh, content-rich session with you that I trust will give you some ideas to be able to um, <clears throat> implement into your business as quickly as you possibly can. So, hey, just relax. Take it easy. Um, take a truckload of notes if you feel that there's some value in what I'm talking about as well. Um, be present as much as you possibly can. Sometimes the words that I might say be just the ones that you're waiting to hear to assist you in your business as well. Um, I'm going to give you an opportunity to participate and maybe share what you're listening to, what you're hearing, um, what you're getting value from, but also share what you're experiencing out in your uh, world at this point in time. And you're going to receive a recording after this session in the next uh, one to two days. So if you wanted to replay the session, you're more than welcome to. And also, Maybe share it with some employees or team players or business partners that you feel are a big part of you uh, implementing your objectives for 2022. That makes sense. So listen, uh, as I said, we're about to connect and collaborate as well. Um, you'll see a little control panel that's usually popped up on the right hand side of your screen. What I'd love you to do is if you can hear me uh, and you can see the screen, just click the the hand up button and that sort of gives me the, um, the indication that you are uh, with me, you're listening, you can see him. Thanks, Ben, I can see you there. Brian, uh, Kyle, Christopher, Glenn, g'day Glenn, good to see you on the session. Harry's there, Kane. And um, and as we go through, would you love to, I'd love you to type into the comments box, um, g'day Michael, uh, what it is that you're actually, where it is you're actually from and the type of business that you're participating in. G'day Nick, g'day Phil. Bruno, Robert, Rod, good to have you on board. Um, g'day Cherie, g'day Trevor. Um, yeah, so we're about to be located and what type of business are you in? Uh, we work with companies all over Australia and New Zealand, so it's always good to get a, a snapshot of where you're dialing in from for this session. That would be terrific. If you could uh, type that into the chat box, that would be amazing and I can just see where people are coming from. Glenn is uh, dropping in from Canberra. Good to have you on the, the session and you've got a painting business, Glenn. Um, Kyle got an electrical company from Shepparton, Victoria. Kyle, my brother is just up or down the road, maybe across the road. He lives at Benalla. Um, and believe it or not, I used to go to Dookie Agricultural College going back, you know, 25, 30 years ago now. So um, I know that area well. Michael, g'day Michael from Yatla in Queensland. Um, Ben's uh, electrical contract on the Gold Coast, good to have you on board. Um, Michael meant to mention he's got a roofing company there. Um, Kale's, um, yes, yes Kale, it is a small world. Um, and g'day Rod from Christchurch, uh, one of my favourite cities um, in the, uh, the South Island there in New Zealand, the renovations and fit out builder as well. So keep typing away into the, uh, the chat box as we go through. Uh, it gives us a snapshot of uh, where you're all from, helps me also direct some of the comments towards you as well. G'day Brian um, from Brisbane, an irrigation and pump company uh, contracting, Santiago. Um, from East Sydney, good to have you on board there as well. Keep tapping away as we progress. And um, listen, really, today's session is about supporting you um, through the next steps in your business. We have a model that we work with at Pro Trade United, which is designed to take you on the journey um, to having a business that gives you space, which is time and, and income, uh, to be able to enjoy the lifestyle that you're looking for as well. Uh, so we take people on a step-by-step -step journey 
um, through survival, through to stability, scaling your business if that's what you choose, creating some space, particularly maybe succeeding uh, and creating a succession plan for your business as well. And we've been working on this model now for the last six months and, and our clients are loving the step-by-step -step process that we work with there as well. And we exist to really support you guys um, around Australia and New Zealand to stabilise and streamline your business, to give you that consistency of income profit and cash um, to scale or grow the number of projects, uh, vans or teams that you've got, but how do you do that profitably as well? Uh, also, if you're at the stage where you wanna step back from the business, step out of the tools, and uh, or maybe just choose a role in the business, that would be terrific as well. G'day Cherie from Melbourne, love to have you on there, and Nick from uh, Victoria's, or Victoria, is it Victoria? I'm gonna presume that is Victoria as well. So thanks for joining us. So guys, just some of the clients that we've got from around the country, good, you know, good people, hardworking, um, a lot of couples, a lot of family type businesses as well, as well as people just kicking out and starting their journey in business as well. Listen, just to give a shout out to um, any of the Victorian um, uh, people on the session today, I am flying down there tomorrow. We've uh, finally been able to kick off a live face-to-face -face event in Victoria after a couple of false starts at the end of last um, last year. So listen, um, if you are interested in uh, coming along, we're at Chadston on Friday for a full day. Uh, and you'd love to come and join us, um, please let me know in the chat box and I'll make sure the team are in touch with you to give you more details um, because we're gonna be covering off some great um, information. It'd be great to meet you in person as well. So listen, our session today is all about retaining key people. Um, I wanna share some numbers with you shortly and basically what I'm seeing and experiencing in the industry right now. And you know, I've been in the people and, and coaching and consulting game now for, for over 20 years. So I've seen, you know, I wouldn't say trends, but I've seen a little, a lot of patterns come and go. But I'd love to hear from you. Yeah, what are you experiencing right now? What is the biggest challenge? And this will help me direct some of the content that I'm gonna talk about back to you specifically. If you could type into the chat box, what you're experiencing right now, what's your biggest challenge in retaining, particularly your key people? Let's face it, if you've got some dubs on the team, that's quite okay if they go to other organisations uh, because they're costing you money right now. But um, keeping your key people, I'd love you to type into the chat box just one or two words. Maybe is it they're being approached by so-called competitors or maybe other businesses or are they disengaged or you know, are they tired and worn out, particularly after the last couple of years dealing with the, uh, the COVID situation? Um, is it... Um, you know, you've got too many people and you can't communicate with them all effectively. There's no wrong or right, but I'd just love to hear from you what you're experiencing in, in keeping up with um, retaining your key people. Um, and so, you know, Glenn, you've got there keeping up with a large workload with unpredictable um, weather and, uh, you know, and then managing the team around that, you know. Let's face it, um, many businesses have had a false start to 2022. Um, I was speaking to a refrigeration company this morning and eight of their 13 techs over the last two weeks have contracted COVID. So it's obviously balancing um, the, the, the team at the same time. Work-life challenges as uh, dealing with, um, you know, the family members and maintaining work-life balance and keeping up with the workload there as well. So in retaining your key people, what is it that, you know, comes to mind in, in, um, in keeping them? And as we go through, please keep typing away. Some of the things I talk about could prompt you to actually share what you're dealing with. Because what I really get is that everybody is relatable. You know, Reno's got positive praise and recognising the things that, they're doing and what they're doing really well. And we'll talk about acknowledgement of praise a little bit later on. Uh, but what I'm really seeing is that everybody's relatable. Whether you've got people that have been offered, you know, five, 10, 15, $20 an hour extra. Whether it's um, just keeping up with, not just work managing the workload, but also supporting your team at the same time. Um, we signed up to be a business owner, but we didn't necessarily know how challenging it would be. So the reality of what we're all dealing with right now is where regardless of what trade or what industry you're in, whether you're a painter, whether you're a plasterer, whether you're in, you know, you're residential or commercial construction, you're a plumber, electrician, landscape, gardener, mechanic, um, refrigeration. We've got a maturing workforce. 
listen, I'm 50 plus a bit of GST this year, so 55 this year. So I'm sort of at the the uh, the tail end of the baby boomers. So the mature workforce, people are sort of my age and 10 years older, are all starting to, to retire. So that sort of um, age group that where hey, listen, if I didn't do well at school, guess what my my the common thread was? Well, if you don't do well, son, you could always fall back on a trade. So a lot of people fell into a trade by default, not necessarily by design. There's now fewer people joining and becoming apprentices or technicians because there's so many more options as far as a career choice goes. Particularly the last couple of years, we've got less overseas workers. There's a shrinking talent pool. The best people are already employed, so finding great people is challenging and also keeping is more challenging than ever before. So if you could sort of relate to that, you know, wave your hand, say yes in the box, uh, totally understand. Um, that'd be great. Brian's got to hear accountability and their work quality for level of pay is also a challenge. So totally, totally get that. So what I've recognised is that now, those business owners that are reactive to people wanting to leave, uh, are caught behind and what I mean by that is um, the ones that are on the front foot, the ones that are proactive, the ones that are creating a business and a team by design versus by default and what I mean by default here is I'm basically making up my team with what's left over because the best people are employed elsewhere. We now get to start and to choose from this point on and I want to share with you some of the things that you can put in place to create a team and a business by design, one of your choosing. It's going to be quite simple, but it's not necessarily easy. So I'll give you sort of the heads up there as well. So the first question I have, here's something to think about. You don't have to answer this, but I want you to consistently think about that. If you've got some great people on, their te on your team, why should they continue to work for you versus going to work with someone else in your industry? The WIIFM is the question that all of us have, by the way, you've got it going on right now. What's in it for me to actually be listening to John talk about this topic tonight? Because your employees will be asking all the time, what's in it for me? Now, not from a selfish perspective, not from an entitlement perspective. Please give me some con let me give you some context around that. But What's in it for me to stay with this organisation when versus going to another organisation or maybe the offer that I've got from down the road or, you know, the other opportunities that are coming my way? Because that is what a lot of your employees can be thinking and may be thinking and some of them will be thinking consistently in your business. So I want you to think about that. Just like that a, a customer, a client is asking the question, why should I choose you? to help me with my problem versus going to a competitor or someone else. So I have got a quick question for you. Yeah, here's, I'm gonna launch a little poll. It won't take, me, take very long, but I'd love you to participate. The question I'm gonna ask you is to, and I'll launch the poll here, and I'd love you to participate. You can answer one of these questions. Yeah, so to retain my best people, I need to either pay them more, provide consistent training, be flexible with work, hours, create a better work environment, or all of the above, yeah? Just if, just go for your first thought. If you think it's one, great. Just allows you to do one answer. What is it? Pay them more, create a better work environment, all of the above, yeah? So please, just gonna give you a few more seconds and I'll share the results so you can actually have a look at what um, comes up, yeah? Just give you another five, another four, three, two, and this is all anonymous, guys. So I don't know who's said what, if that makes a difference to you selecting anything. All right, and I want to close the poll there. So let me share the results. This is what you guys have said 13% say, well, I've got to just got to pay them more. 20% have said, well, I've got to create a better work environment, but isn't it interesting? You know, two out of three of you said, you know what, well, I've got to do all of the above. Do all of the above, how bloody hard is that? Not only got to pay them more, I've got to give them consistent training, got to be flexible with their work hours and create a better work environment. Oh my goodness, I didn't really sign up for all of that when I wanted to become a business owner. So, hey, as I said, there's a few things we can work on and I'm gonna support you with that tonight. But it doesn't all have to be done at once. 
one of the things that we work with clients on, particularly if we go back to this little slide here, which is climbing the mountain, um, scaling the business and transforming your team, you know, is, is, is in a lot of cases a two or three and a four year journey. So it's not a rushed process. However, I'm gonna give you some tools that you can implement to take action in the next 90 days, yep. So here's some interesting comparisons that when they've researched, and I wanna share some numbers with you here, and there's a few sources for this research that I won't go into tonight, uh, but you know, if you wanna check, check with me, you're more than welcome to do so. But when asked, when owners are asked what they think that their employees want, this is what the top five came back to be. Good wages, so paid well, job security, promotion and growth opportunities, good working conditions and interesting work. So when 600 companies were, you know, were um, surveyed, this is what they came back with. This is what they thought their employees wanted. Now, when they went to the employees of those same companies and asked the questions, what's important to you to stay with an organisation, let's have a look at what came up. Here's what employees really want. Appreciation for the work done. Feeling in on things, which is really about communication. Yeah, is the business owner good at communicating what's actually happening, where we're we going, the vision, those types of things. Support and flexibility with personal life. So that could be in this situation from the data that came back, you know, the kids have got some events coming up at school and I want to be able to take a few hours off here or I need to take a day off here because my wife's sick or I've got to take me some family scenarios. Promotion and growth opportunities, and isn't that interesting? Number five was good wages. So money is important, but it is rarely the most important thing. And what I want you to think about is that if your team are going elsewhere because they're getting paid better, it's because you're not providing anything else for them to want to stay. That is of value to them. Yep, so money is important, but it's rarely the most important. So here's also what the data shows, that of the 600 companies that were, you know, um, polled, 63, you know, you know, six out of 10 say retaining employees is actually harder than hiring them. Isn't that interesting? Eight out of 10 employees would consider leaving their jobs for the right offer, even if they wouldn't be looking for a job at the moment. So again, what that means is they're not happy and satisfied with where they are. In some cases, people might say, well, you've got to pay me more to stay here. Younger employees, 75%, you know, three out of four would accept a pay cut for a chance to work at their ideal job. Isn't that interesting? Now, often we think about it's all about the money. No, but actually, as I said, money is not the most important if people got a great opportunity. And 23% of those looking for a job wouldn't need a pay increase to take a new position, which again means that they're not happy with where they are. They just want a better working environment. So before we go into looking at this, you know, the, the, the key steps and retaining them, let's look at the mistakes that people are making. And what I've seen over and over again with businesses in hiring and keeping their best people. Number one is they have the wrong approach. Now, what I mean by the wrong approach here, Guys, I used to play um, AFL in country Victoria. I mentioned before that I went to, and I used to play for uh, Dookie Agriculture College, but also some football teams in Western Victoria. And the approach they had when they wanted to fill a team, particularly the seconds I used to play in the reserves, not necessarily a senior player, was that they were always short two or three people on a Saturday afternoon. So they used to walk around the ground with a, with a handful of jumpers and look for some usual suspects. So they'd say things like, you know, Simon, um, mate, a couple of short today, would you mind just chucking on a jersey, sitting in the back pocket and waving your arms about, that'd be great. Um, and they do that consistently week after week. And so it was a very reactive approach to filling the team, whereby you get a professional team who, when they think about hiring and keeping their best, they're not just looking at the season. They're looking two to three to four years in front. In fact, the hiring approach is always about who are the, the scouts are out. Who are the cadets? Who are the people that they're bringing under their wing early in, in, in the piece? You know, my, my, my niece um, plays AFL in country Victoria and she's positioning herself to play with the Richmond Tigers AFLW team, but they're already talking to her. She's only just turned 18. Well, she, she's turning 18 next week. 
but the scouts is looking at the team for the next three to four years, not just this season. So if you want to have a sustainable business and a team that's engaged, you don't want to be reactive. You've got to start preparing and thinking about A, who you want on your team, the next steps for your team and where they can progress to, not just this week, this month, but where in 12 months time can they see themselves? So that's the first thing. Secondly, is they hire only for skills and they hire based and keep people based on skills. Now, skill set is important, particularly if you're in a technical trade, you know, in an electrical situation, refrigeration, maybe plumbing, um, you know, in certain levels of, of construction where skills are super important. But after that, once they've got the desired and the required skill set, the rest is all attitude. In fact, I know if I ask the question here, would you prefer someone on your team who's got 20 to 30 years of experience but their attitude sucks versus getting someone who's got a base level of skill but is super keen to learn and grow and be part of the long-term future of your organization and want to learn? I know what you choose. So in the hiring process, and here's the thing, when people keep people, it's not necessarily about their attitudes, their skills. So it's a big mistake, a big mistake. And third thing is they, again, short-term thinking, not thinking about the business in the next three to five years. Yeah, so there's some things to consider and the mistakes that we see people making consistently. The other thing I want you to do, because I'm going to talk about retaining and creating a great environment, is to have a look at you, your team are a reflection of you. and what tends to happen is that who you keep and attract moving forward can be a reflection of the team that you've got right now. So I'm going to show you a very simple way that you can categorize the, the people on your team right now. It's very simple, not necessarily easy, but it could be quite confronting when you tell the whole truth about the people that you've got. So we've got a combination in this scenario of your attitude, people's attitude are in a match for the core values or the values of organisation, and their the skills and the ability to deliver results. Yep, so all of that makes sense. So when we've got an A grader, when I talk about an A grader, an A grader is someone who has the skills, can deliver results, and has an amazing attitude, and is a fit for the values of your organisation. Now these are the type of people that you could leave 100% all the time and know that things would be taken care of and also they'd be great custodians for the culture of your business. Then we've got B players and B players have got the attitude and have a match for the values but they haven't quite got the skills yet. So these are like your really enthusiastic apprentices. These are the ones that you want to groom and develop and you know, grow to become A players. We've then got C players and the C players have the skills and they can deliver the results when they're on, but their attitude sucks and they're not a match for the values of your organisation. And then we have the Ds, and the Ds are the duds. These are the ones who don't have the skills, they can't do the job, and their attitude sucks as well. So what we have to look at, we're not going to talk about strategies here at the moment, but this is more just a snapshot of your existing business. We want to groom our Bs into As. Yeah, we've got to train and develop and give them a career process. We want to get rid of the duds immediately because they're costing your business money right now. You know, if they weren't on the team, it wouldn't really make a difference. They're just taking up space. C's we want to let go of because C's can move back to A's. But at the moment, we've got to either ship them out because these are the ones who are infecting your organisation. These are the ones that behind the scenes are whinging, moaning, complaining, got entitlement mentality. Um, and you allowing them to stay on the team, this is brutally honest, is a sign of your poor leadership. Because what will happen is your A's will either go, I hope this guy does something about you know, these C players or else I'm going. And with your A's, what we want to do is to get them even better skilled and be more ingrained in the culture of your organisation. So B's and A's is where we want to play the game. Yep, D's and C's and raise your hand, say, yes, I can relate. Um, you know. I would, I would say most businesses and business owners can relate to the, um, the C players, the ones that I call the cancerous ones. They infect, they're like weeds in your garden. They don't necessarily show their head until they've put their roots into the ground and the runners have infected the rest of the team as well. So 
let's have a look before we get going and I'm going to start to share with you some strategies to retain your key people I would love to hear from you just for 30 seconds could you do me a favor come to the chat box yep type into the box what you found valuable what is an awareness that you now have around your existing team, maybe around your people, maybe the type of people that you want to attract in the future or the type of business that you want to create as well. I'm just going to grab a little drink and then we're going to roll up our sleeves even further and get into the key aspects to retain your best people. Please share away. So Glenn's got, I only hire an attitude, skills I can teach 100%, yeah? Particularly in painting, you know, you see some base levels of skill, but I agree, when you've got a painting organisation and you provide a training and structured painting process, Glenn, that's beautiful. Um, Brian says, I, can't, I have a saying, you can't teach enthusiasm. Yeah, listen, attitude determines your altitude, yeah? Um, is attitudes are, are contagious as yours worth catching um, so Cherie's got a question here she says what if you've got a dud and you know and you are unable to replace due to a lack of resources in the industry um, great question and the reason I read it out Cherie is because it's quite pertinent to a lot of people at the moment so I'm going to look, give an example what has it that when say it doesn't happen in AFL very often, but rugby league or even soccer, where someone gets sent off, you know, for poor behaviour, they give given the red card or whatever it might be. I can't know what colour it is. Have you ever noticed how that team can lift and actually perform to the ability of a full team? That's what I really wanted you to think about. And every time, and I'm going to say 100% of the time, Cherie, when you let go of someone who is a dud or a C player, the first thing that business owners will say is, I should have done that three weeks ago, three months ago, six months ago. Yep, because keeping that person on your team is actually holding the others back. It's probably taking up rent in your head, keeping you awake at night about their bad attitude. Now, I don't know all the details here, I'm being very general, it's not easy, but sometimes making the tough decision is key. Um, Glenn said, talk your advice years ago and remove the C's. Good on you, buddy. I know, you know, it's a tough decision at the time and business has been so much better since. Lovely. Um, yeah, Scott said it is tough when you've got a low performer and you need to let them go. Um, promote key candidates to a bigger role, says Rena. Lovely there. Willingness to have a go and learn for having a go. Yeah, good on you, Brian. Trevor's got always looking for enthusiastic people to employ in painting. Yep. Um, and, you know, your staff either rise to meet your standards or they're welcome, um, as Glenn says here, to get in the youths and leave. And here's one thing for everybody, thanks, mate, that's so, so truthful, is that you never apologise for having high standards. Never. Don't lower your standards just to keep other people happy or other people employed. Please, you are better than that. It's not easy, but I think you're better off having fewer people on the team saying no to a few customers, saying yes to less work, delivering on a higher quality, and you will be profitable. You will be more profitable. Larger volume of work, as you know, does not always mean more profit. In fact, a smaller boutique, you know, consistent team of people that you can trust day in, day out is the one that's going to give you the long-term benefits. So let's get into an acronym that I created at the end of last year to make it easy for our clients to remember some of the key things to retain their best people. And I want to run through all these individually so you don't need to jot this slide down. But we're going to talk about recognition, engage, train and teach, accountability, inspire and next steps. So the first one I'm going to talk about is recognition and the meaning in this scenario, the context around recognition here is the acknowledgement of the existence, yeah, the acknowledgement of the existence or validity of something. So let's give you a couple of examples. First and foremost is acknowledging effort and results, specifically acknowledging and communicating to your team or individuals about the effort they put in, 
and the results they're producing. But it's also recognizing the reality and knowledge of something that is also there that you may have swept under the carpet. Like when someone is not performing, you need to recognize that and address it. Okay, because that is as important as recognizing the great quality work. Because if you've got two employees, one is continually putting in the effort, delivering results, and you've got another employee who is showing up late, has a bad attitude, um, doesn't get on with the rest of the team, and you don't recognize and acknowledge that and deal with that, no communication is in fact a form of communication. The other point there, you know, the current reality or knowledge of such is saying, hey, you know what, guys, we've had a a lumpy start to 2022. You know, we've had two or three people who've got COVID. We've had, um, you know, a couple of clients who've had the same challenges as well. Um, and just acknowledging the presence of what's actually happening versus ignoring it and sweeping under the carpet is really important. And there's a real skill in being able to state the obvious, don't try and sweep it away. And, you know, again, some of the numbers that were coming up is that 37% of employees cited recognition as the most important method of support. And 84% of highly engaged employees were recognised the last time that they went over and beyond. So keep that in mind that the people who get acknowledged for the work that they're putting in, what gets rewarded gets repeated. I'll say that again, what gets rewarded gets repeated. And sometimes that's a little bit of praise, a little bit of acknowledgement, yeah, about what's actually happening. So that's our recognition. Secondly, we want to engage or create engagement. And how do we create engagement? Well, first and foremost, one of the things we can do is create a game. Most people love to play a game. Most people, you know, and engage people with a game and a scorecard or the ability to tell whether they're winning or not. So I'll give you an example in a minute of, 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 a, of a client of ours who's used that game structure to engage their team in, in winning. But it could be, for example, if you've got you know um, a project that you need to be finished in the next two weeks and you create a game that says, hey guys, listen, we need to finish on time and under budget. And guess what? If we finish under budget, which means we save time in, in, in our labor component and we save on materials, what we'd love to do is take a percentage of that and put it towards taking the team out for, um, you know, a, a can of lunch or putting it towards a end of year pool that we use to have for our Christmas party. And then what you actually need to do is inform people and communicate how the team is actually performing on that. Um, so I'll give you another example in a, more, in, a, in a minute around that. But what we want you to keep in point is that creating a game, communicating how the team are performing is super important. And it's got there that 85% of employees are not engaged in the workforce. Only 15% are. And 91% of the surveyed employees think that their leaders lack communication skills. Let's recognise and acknowledge the facts that when you went into your business, I guarantee, you know, 95% of you were not communicated with to say, hey, listen, one of the things that you'll need to become really great at as a business leader is communicating, discussing, talking, engaging, and working with your team. All we were focused on is going out and there and doing our craft and being the best that we possibly could. So I want you to think about that. Actually, I'll go straight to the game that, you know, Christine and Dylan at Dawson Electric. Christine's actually one of our team as a coach at the moment, on, uh, alongside running her electrical business with her husband. They wanted to increase the number of five-star Google reviews that they have. Now, if you Google Dawson Electric, they're a Brisbane-based firm, and I think they're probably up to about 150, 160 five-star Google reviews. But they created a game with their team. They said, okay, over the next 90 days, we want to you know, get X number of Google reviews. And they kept a little scorecard in their smoko room and each morning the team would come in, how many are we up to? And they said, listen, in the next 90 days, if we can achieve that number, well then we'll take everybody out and we'll do some axe throwing or we'll go um, go kart go kart racing or they created some sort of reward for their team. And they do that now every 90 days. They create a game, they engage the team, they communicate the score and it keeps everybody excited at on point. The other thing that you might want to think about are other support structures to engage your team. And one of the things that Dylan and Christine 
uh, Dylan and Christine have done in their organisation for 2022 is they've created an employee health and wellness program. And I think what they've allocated is up to $1,000 per employee that each employee can choose to use towards gym memberships, yoga sessions, um, CrossFit, uh, surfing lessons, things that will help them keep healthy and well mentally and physically and nutritionally as well. They could use it towards a dietitian. They could use it towards giving up smoking, doing meditation courses. But again, coming back down to engaging people um, in the bigger picture, not just showing up doing their job is important. All right, teaching and training. Now, one thing I know for sure is your employees love to learn. Many of them have had poor learning experiences. You love to learn. I know you do. One of the things while you're on this session is if you can learn one or two things, three, one or two things to help you in your business, it will be exciting for you. But there's two types of skills that people love to learn. One's obviously the technical or the hard skills for the trade. So whether I become a better painter, a better electrician, a better landscape gardener, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of skills that you can teach people. But it's also the soft skills, leadership communication, relationships, understanding personalities. Maybe it's about health and wellness. Maybe it's about mindset. Maybe it's about um, their uh, financial future. Yeah. Maybe it's about parenting. What about if you provided a holistic development program where you weren't just concerned about upskilling your team technically so that they can do better work, which then helps you become a better business and generate better profits. But what about you assisted them to get access to the soft skills that help them become better people, to become better parents, to become healthier, to become wealthier financially? How about you were seen as a source to help your employees just become well-rounded human beings? So as you know, see there, the number says 87% of millennials, they're the people born from 1990 onwards. Consider training and development in the job absolutely imperative. So I'm gonna throw that out to you. We have a leadership development program that we specifically created to support business owners in teaching and training their team and the key people, not only business leadership skills, but personal leadership skills as well. So think about that and I'm going to show you, you need to be able to communicate what you're going to be investing in your team as well. Um, this is uh, Tony uh, Stevens Refrigeration. I was on a call this morning with uh, Dom and Nathan and Kate, who you see on the right hand side there. They're in the process at the moment of launching a training or a progression matrix with their team. So they have um, 13 to 14 techs plus their office team. And what they're looking to do is launch a training program. So for 2022, each employee knows exactly the skills that they're gonna learn, when they're gonna learn it, who's gonna be teaching them that, and they know where they can be in the organization at the end of this year. So something to consider, um, particularly for your team, they wanna learn, they wanna grow, help them become better people. Accountability, all right, this is the, the fourth one in the retain acronym. Accountability, create an environment where people are accountable and uh, for delivering on specific results, and then, do what they say they're going to do. Now, down the bottom there, I've got one in three employees don't trust their employers. Now, I'm going to give you some context around that because it's not necessarily I don't trust them because they're dishonest. I don't trust entirely everything that they say. And I'll give you an example because I was guilty of this in the early days as a business owner. Because I wanted to create the perception that we were a forward planning and a um, engaging business, I would often commit to projects and not be able to follow through on them. I would often say, yes, we're gonna do this and yes, we're gonna do that, but I didn't actually hold myself accountable to that. So what I'm really conscious of is I now say yes to less. When I do say yes to something, I ensure that we follow through on making it happen. And we also have a team that is given specific performance measures and we support them to follow through on delivering on those performance measures. So if you can create an environment where people commit to outcomes and that are held accountable to that, it's amazing how the engagement 
and the culture of the organisation just gets better and better and better. Imagine a professional football team where you've got people walking around saying, yeah, I'm going to do that, but they never do. Or the coach says, yeah, we're going to do this, and they never do. Okay, keep in mind, be your word. Not easy, but quite simple. Andrew, who's got uh, a company in Melbourne, 100% Plumbing, he's a part of our master's program, as is Christine and also um, Dylan at the TSR guys. I and mean, that's our high level program where people get invited to join after being part of our, our community for a few years. And Andrew has a beautiful team. And um, one of the things he's really conscious of is I've got to be careful of what I say yes to we're going to do. Because I love to create a place where people know that whoever says they're going to do something, they follow through and make it happen. And he's definitely getting a, a business that's going from strength to strength to strength. And um, in probably one of the most challenging years that Melbourne's had in recent history, he's delivered you know, record results. So well done, Andrew, on that. The I in retain stands for inspire. Now, here's what I want you to think about. Your role is not to motivate your employees. Your role is not to make your employees happy. That's not your responsibility. Motivation and happiness is an inside out job. Okay, when I hear an employee say, oh, employer say, listen, I just want to ensure my team are happy, I said, that is a fruitless task. Because if your employees are continually relying on external circumstances, a la you, to have them feel happy, then they will continue to look for external circumstances for them to be happy. Happiness and motivation is an inside out game. But what you can do is inspire people. And what I mean by inspire is breathe life into, which means help people see that there is something more in them than they can acknowledge for themselves. And also be excited about the journey that they're on. And the two things that I'm going to share with you here is to help people be inspired and want to be part of your business is to share a vision with them. Now, a vision is what we actually help clients de de develop and deliver. And that's where are you going? What's 2022 look like for you and the business? And what I mean by that is, you know, if you were to jump on a, a, um, on a cruise boat down at, down at the harbour and you said to the captain after you were taking off, oh, where are we off to today? And the captain or the skipper says, oh, we're just going to float around in the bay for a while. We'll see which way the wind blows, which way the tide takes us. And um, we could end up somewhere exciting. Um, or the skipper, the captain says, you know what, what we're going to do is going to head out the bay. We're going to turn right. We're going to scoot along there for a couple of hundred kilometres. We're going to pull up. We're going to do some fishing. You get the rest of the story. There's a direction. There's a vision. There's, there's a place where people are heading. Your team want to be know that they're part of an organisation that is going somewhere. It's just not going to be the same stuff, but a different year. So a vision and then the core values is another aspect of what we do and help clients uh, work is build up what matters most in your organisation. These are the rules of the game. This is how we're going to play this year. We're going to play with respect. We're going to be professional. We're going to be prompt. We're going to be safe. We're going to do what we say we're going to do. You know, these are the types of things, they're the rules of the game. Now, if you have a vision and you have core values, one of the things I want you to keep in mind, it doesn't matter what they are, you can continue to perfect them and work on them. But the fact that you've got a vision and you've got some values says that you know the type of environment you want to create. Now, every organisation has a culture. But the question is, is the culture aligned with you achieving and accomplishing the goals that you want to create this year. And you've got to clean out the D's and C's. Easier said than done, I know. That's another conversation altogether. But you know what your team is like when the D's and when the C's are gone. If you've had a team that is lighter, but productive and faster moving, you know, D's and C's will just slow you down. Okay, so what we've recognised here is the companies that have got the best corporate cultures that encourage all around leadership initiatives and that highly appreciate their employees grew 682% in revenue over the period of time. And 47% of the people actively looking for a new job point 
company culture as the main reason for wanting to leave. Isn't that interesting? Now, one of my quotes here is that the true value of leadership is measured by the work they do, is not by the work they do, but it's measured by the work they inspire other people to do. And the last one in the retain acronym is next steps. Yep, where are you going? What are the next steps that you're helping people see? People want to progress. They always, people love to be led when they have confidence in the leader. So sitting down with each and every one of your employees, if you haven't done so already, this year is going to be super important to show and ask them, where would they like to be? What skills would they like to develop? Let's create a bit of a career plan with you. So at the end of this year and then the end of next year, people can see a future with your organisation. If they can't see past the end of this week with your organisation, then they don't have a long-term future with your organisation. But if they see that amongst all of the stuff they're doing with you, they're actually progressing themselves, they will want to stay. They will want to stay with you because you're invested in them. And there's some numbers and stats, again, there to support some of the things I've been talking about. So let's take a quick pause. Time is flying by. We've got about seven or eight minutes to go. Um, what I'd love to do is hear from you. What have you found value? Have you got a question that you'd like to ask? If it's general, I'll be able to help. If it's more specific, maybe we can talk a little bit later. But I'm just going to take another drink, catch my breath, allow you to contribute to chat, share with what you're learning, maybe what a takeaway is for you, or maybe share something that you're doing in your business that other people on the session could benefit from. I'll be back with you shortly. Right, how are we going? Thank you for those people who are contributing there. Um, so Brian's got here every day. I thank my staff for their effort. Thank you. They all tell me it makes them feel special. And that's what we all do it for. Believe it or not, it's the feelings that people do it for it as well. Um, uh, listen, Philip's got a quick question here. What happens when your best employee was happy where he was, but he's purely looking at a higher pay is offered? 24, 5% more and he leaves. So one of the things that, you know, in that, where do they fit in? Well, if it's all about the money, they're gonna to go to whoever offers them the most, yeah? And, and let's face it, we probably all know people who've jumped ship for super good dollars, but it's not a long-term prospect, okay? Now, uh, salaries are going up. But if salary, increasing your salaries is the only ingredient that you've got to try and keep your people, they will always jump ship for more money. But if you look at a salary increase based on performance and contribution to the business, and you look at other things to help retain them, that whole recipe can make a difference as well. Santiago's got, what are some examples of recognition? Well, I think um, Brian just shared there. I always thank my staff for their effort, you know, each and every day. The simple thing of, um, one of the things that we do in our organisation is we have a weekly team meeting, Tuesday morning. So we had one this morning, 8.05, goes for about 25 minutes. And we have about eight people in that team meeting every every Tuesday morning and the first thing we do is each person goes around and shares a highlight from the previous week and someone on the team that they'd like to acknowledge. So acknowledge and recognition doesn't necessarily need to come from the business owner. It can also come from other employees as well. So then we tally up the amount of recognition that people get over a period of time and a bit like frequent flyers, they're able to cash them in for bonuses or gifts or you know incentives along the way. Walk the talk, says Scott. A great reminder that leading by example is the key to leadership. Uh, Michael's got here, our company is currently running a bonus system each quarter, but it has become expected rather than appreciating it as, as an extra thank you. Interesting. You know, we, I often get asked, what's the best, you know, incentive program or bonus system? And there is no best. Yeah. However, um, it does need to be aligned with exceptional performance, not just standard performance. You know, you don't give bonuses for showing up and doing a job. You know, people are, you know, if you've got 
employment agreements in place and position descriptions, there's a certain level of performance that people are expected to deliver on day after day, week after week. Don't reward people for just doing their job. But if there's a team that works well over a quarter or 90 day period and the results are exceptional, yeah, sure, have a look at that. But if the results aren't there, it's like you don't acknowledge a football team for losing, even though they tried really hard. Hey, guess what? It came really close, but we didn't win. So no one wins. If a team wins consistently, they win the premiership, sure, let's celebrate those results. So guys, I mentioned um, in the promo that we're gonna talk about how to you know, help people succeed when onboarding. Very quickly, when you bring someone on board, future pace them, paint the picture. As I talked about the next steps in the RETAIN acronym, where are they going? And help them see where their role plays a bigger part in the organization. Set them up to win. So what that means is you don't throw them in the deep end, hope that they sink or swim. Setting them up to win, one of the things you can do is align them with a buddy. You know, set them up to succeed as quickly as possible because the sooner they succeed in their role, the more productive and profitable they'll be for the organization as well. And they'll feel good about the results that they're delivering. And the third part there is communicate early and often, give them feedback, let them know when they're on track, let them know when they're off track. You know, better off over communicating or under communicating. Again, if you're keen to deep dive on some of this, please be in touch and we'd love to support you with any of what I've talked about tonight. So um, Brooke, this is Brooke, she's uh, another amazing client, previous business of the year winner at our annual awards. And uh, one of the things that she does is when she's got a team now of 45 to 50 on her um, landscaping maintenance and construction team, that when someone comes on board, there's a fully systemized process to get them up to speed. She lines them up with a buddy who's really with them for the first couple of weeks and is the person that can answer and support the questions that they may have about the organization. And she's grown from being someone who was on the tools, mowing lawns, whippersnippering edges to a, an amazing team, 45 to 50 employees over the last seven to eight years at Pro Trade United. Um, but she has a really effective onboarding process it gets a team up to speed and winning in the role, feeling good about themselves and working with the organization as quickly as possible. So with all the ideas that we've chatted about, we have really run through a truckload. Less is more, pick one, pick two, go to work and implement on that. And here's a little project, okay? Become the best leader you can. Leadership is not a destination where you arrive. Leadership is a practice, it's continual, improvement each and every day. Get to know your team, understand what makes them tick, understand each of them, where they want to go, what does their future look like, what are their personal goals, what are their career goals? And then take the retain acronym and over the next 90 days, you know, implement something to each of those. So between now and say the end of April, you've got some structures in place that are going to support your team to want to be part of your organisation moving forward. And one last thing, everything I've talked about in implementation and change is hard at first, can be really messy. So don't give up, be persistent, be consistent with some of the things I've talked about, but it can be beautiful at the end and easy to maintain. So one of the things that we are all about is continuing to help businesses create their future by design, not by default. For some people, they've started 2022 and they're just walking out into the fog. It's almost like, my goodness, it's the first of, yeah, first of February today. Incredible, isn't it? January's gone, boom, just like that. What does the next month, the next month look like? Or is it just, I'm just going out and just feeling my way through it. Hopefully I'm gonna end up in the right place. Our goal is to take you on a structured, methodical, consistent, enjoyable journey as you grow and develop your business. If you would love some support around that, one of the things that we're offering everybody on the session tonight, is a chance to catch up with one of our team. And what we'll do is we'll have a look at where you are now, where you'd love to work through. We've got a very structured diagnostic tool that helps you uncover the challenges, uncovers the obstacle, and then give you an opportunity to create an amazing year ahead with two or three key steps. So one of the things that I'd love to do is just launch a little quick question. If you'd love to catch up with one of this, one of the team, and said we've got clients all around the country in New Zealand, so we do this each and every day. We can sit down with you for 60 or 90 minutes, 
have a great conversation, deep dive around, you know, where you'd love your business and your life to be, what's the business doing for you right now, and then make some specific recommendations, tailor-made to your business, um, that you can implement over the next three to six months to get you traction on the year. So, if you'd love one of those, please say yes. If it's a no, that's quite okay. If you'd like some more information, yeah, and you'd like to understand what's involved with the session as well, please just tick unsure and one of the team can be in touch and give you those details as well, yeah? So um, leave it up there just for a, a little bit more. One of the things is with clarity precedes mastery. You cannot master anything that you're not clear about where you're going and how you'd like it to be in the end. All right, okay. three, two, four, one, lovely. All right. So hey, I just want to say thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I trust that it's been of value. Again, for those people in Melbourne, um, if you'd love to connect and say good day on um, on Friday this week, I know it's only a few days away. Um, we could organise uh, some space and um, a seat for you. Just tick yes or say yes, please, for Melbourne in um, in the chat box, and I'll get one of the team to be in touch to give you all the details. But it's going to be a great day with our community down there as well. Um, thanks for being on touch. Keep being amazing, not just for your industry, but more importantly, for your team and for your clients and ensure that you show up each and every day being the best version of yourself because that's what you're here for. Thanks again and we'll talk to you soon.